He says white renegades are responsible. White man? Huh. Anybody knows a white man from an Indian. say they don't know who they are, but they come from the Beaver Lake region. There are many of them, many guns and much ammunition. wagon train is headed this way down the buffalo trail across Lone Pine Prairie. Yeah? They're going to Oregon with ammunition and supplies for the railroad. My two partners, Buck Roberts and Sandy Hopkins, are seeing them through under government orders. You never told me you was a government man. There's a lot of things I don't even tell my best friends. <laughs> Until I'm sure that I can trust them. Well, that's different. Now listen. There's a lot of lives and a fortune in railroad property, depending on how quick you can get to Buck and Sandy. Tell them what the chief said about the white renegades. They gotta be warned. I'll get her done. Be sure and talk to Buck and Sandy alone. Tell them I've gone on ahead to look over things at Beaver Lake. I'll be waiting for them there. Good luck. So long. back along the train, Wallace. All fine, Buck. Everything except the crackle outfit. They still griping? Sure. About everything from the dust on Mr. Crackle's bonnet to the trailer that we're taking. Uh, Not to mention the gambler's outfit in the back and that young woman that you befriended. I guess you found out, Wallace, there's no place like a wagon train to study human nature. Kind of like a hotel. You gotta open the doors and look in. Yep. Matter, honey, aren't you comfortable after all the trouble I went to rigging up that throne? Why, even Mrs. Corkle's been eyeing your seat with envy. Well, so she ordered the big battle axe with what she's lugging around. Gusting around and we ain't even married. <laughs> Gee, I'd give my eye tooth to look in her closet. Well, I could drag out a flock of skeletons that'd smell from Kansas City to Oregon if she was going that far. So it is Mrs. Corkle that's eating you. But you might be sore about having to dump that trunk full of dresses and finery back there in the desert to make room for our passengers. What kind of a gal do you think I am, getting sore over losing a trunk full of glad rags? A couple of my cup in the back, ain't I? Guess she needs the space more than I need the clothes. Anyway, I kept out a couple of my beauties and hid them under the seat. Ah, uh, you're sure taking them like a sport, honey, and I... Why shouldn't I? She's sick, man. I was going to say, uh, I guess you're the one that's earning this. But Robert's I owe you for $500. Yep. That's his pay for this whole trip. He gave it to me for her passage. I guess that'll make up for your glad rags. Oh, it's pretty regular, are they, man? Yeah. Mighty big. Better start doing something, Judge, about talking Roberts and Wallace and taking the direct trail to Beaver Lake. Yes, and the sooner we get there, the quicker we'll get rid of the indecent company that had to put up with on this train. Say, where's Sandy Hopkins? I sent him on ahead a while ago to scout for a camp for tonight. Here he comes now. Well, I found the best spot yet. Yeah, where? 
Right over that rise. Plenty of trees and lots of water. You're sure steering us right, Buck. All we got to do now is hope the Indians don't get wise to us skirting the beaten trail. Say, I never mentioned it before, but I'm going to see if the railroad company gives you fellows a bonus for seeing us through. A bonus? Well, Buck could sure use a bonus. Imagine him signing a note to that gambler for his whole trip's pay just to see that sick woman get through to Beaver Lake. Why don't you button your traps, Andy? Oh, you disgust me. Thanks ever so much for your offer, Wallace. But seeing you through is our job, and you can skip the bonus, too. I'm going back and tell the folks we're camping soon. Lead the way, will you, Sandy? Yeah. <laughs> Buck, I made a deal with Sadie and passed your note over to her. Yeah, I'm the landlady now. You have to make the payoff to me. Well, that's fine, just so you don't let the interest pile up too much. Hey, how is our passenger doing? Oh, just the same. Staring out, looking at the scenery, and scared as dickens. If you'd only loosen up and tell us who she is and who she's heading for at Beaver Lake, it might make things a lot more comfortable for all of us. Yeah, especially for the muzzle on that corkle cat. <laughs> Judge John Cole. I bet anybody he ever judged was hung before the trial started. Yeah, if I know anything about his type, they probably kicked him off the bench in Kansas, so he's coming out here to see what kind of trouble he can cook up. Say, Robert, uh, what do you think the old stuff shirt is coming out to Beaver Lake for anyway? I don't know. Only he says he's a brother of Jim Corkle who practically owns the whole town. That and the fact that he has three wagon loads of merchandise for him is about all I know about him, ma'am. Oh, well. Just as well Matt and me ain't stopping off in Beaver Lake, or I'd get into trouble with that Corkle gang just as soon as you could wink an eye. Well, we are stopping so you can save that pepper of yours until the next time we have a fight. <laughs> I'd like to see you have that fight, Rand, and I'd like to see you afterwards. <laughs> Say, listen, we're pulling into camp in a few minutes. See you later. All right, Buck. Howdy, Mrs. Horgan. Howdy. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. Roberts. Well, you don't come calling very often, do you? We haven't seen you since camp last night. My job's up in front. Mrs. Horgan, we're pulling into camp pretty soon. Supposing I send you back a boy to give you a hand. I ain't needing any help. You ask for any favors. Thanks just to say, Roberts. All right. You're the boss. See you in camp. I'd like to know we're pulling into camp. Keep your three wagons lined up as you are as we circle in. Hey, what are you doing back here, Sandy? Oh, just moseying around. You know, it's kind of lonesome just looking at the scenery. Uh, say, Roberts, I don't get the idea of this roundabout way you're taking to get where we're going. Now, I've said before I've got goods for my brother's store. And I've been commissioned to establish law and justice at Beaver Lake, and my affairs can't wait. I suggest you forget this yellow-livered pair of Indians and take that shortcut to Beaver Lake. Listen, what do you mean, yellow-livered? Dry up, Sandy. Oh. Listen, Judge, I don't know whether you know it or not, but this is a railroad supply wagon train. It was your own affairs that you joined up with it, and it's your own affairs if you don't like the trail we're going on. So use your own judgment. Now, you can go on your own. You can cut off that shortcut any time you're a mind to. Perhaps Mr. Roberts prefers the exclusive company with that disreputable gambler. And the two women is harboring in his wagon. Buck, come on, let's get out of here before I get mad. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, pretty good. We're going into camp pretty soon up here. I was just wondering if you wouldn't like to step off of that wagon and go back to Mrs. Harkin's wagon and go to give him a hand. Sure. Well, but guys, do you think Mrs. Harkness will stand for it? 
Oh, if you approach her right, Jandal, she may be all right. <laughs> Hank! You know, Buck, when I smell rats, I smell them. And if that outfit ain't heading for trouble, I'll put in with you. I'm beginning to wonder, too, why he picked out Beaver Lake to set up his law. And who commissioned him? Maybe he commissioned himself. That ever occur to you? I think you found something there, Sandy. You can bet you. Buck Roberts was saying you might need a man to help out back here. Help? <laughs> I was just saying to Mary that... We don't need a man's help traveling along these plains. Mother. Well, come on out there before you fall off the wagon. Mean. Well, son, how's things going on up the front? Fine. Looks like we're getting ready to camp for the night. We can't camp too soon for me. <laughs> Come on. about Stevens? Got him and his gang of renegades all set to help us out again? Yeah, they're up in the hills waiting for orders. I sent Ed and Gus up to see him. Just remember this. If that railroad figures a way to get the supplies through, we're washed up. Not even a wagon train or a stagecoach will ever come through here again. Now, if you can't scout that train, you watch for my brother's signal fire at sunup. I ain't got through yet. Dad's waiting inside for you. Everything all set, Ed? Yeah, they're gonna meet us in Granite Pass. Well, then you better get started. There ain't no rush. My father comes out of the office. I'll tell him you and your husband want to see him about your land contract. I'll get the sugar for you. Watch your step with our wagons. I want my brother and his wife to come through without any accidents. We ain't going to gum up the chance to establish justice in Beaver Lake, are we? <laughs> I got a hand it to you Easterners. Click on the brain work. You don't take the suckers on the land deals and in the palace saloon, Game to do with politics. Give him a chance to vote and trial the bananas judge. <laughs> I gotta laugh when I think of that setup. We're doing all right, but we still don't want any railroad. There ain't gonna be any. Fifty miles away either. Yeah. Well, if they don't advance civilization in our direction, they won't advance it at all. You said it. Come on, boys. I do for you, stranger. Oh, uh, I'd like to get an outfit to take the place of these buckskins. All right, right over here. There's one that ought to look good on you. I'll wait on him, Tony. All right, Dad. Looks like you run this place. I do. Name's Carkle, Jim Carkle. Jack Carson's mine. How about this? Not a bad looking coat for you? No. I believe this one will do me. Well, that's rather fancy for a scout, isn't it? Scout? Do I look like enough a fool to be blazing trails and making friends with Indians? Well, matter of fact, you do. <laughs> well, I don't blame you for thinking so. But you see, a trapper stole my outfit last night and left me these. I stopped over at his cabin on my way down from Oregon. Oh, a railroad man, huh? No, you're wrong again. Gambling's my profession. Have you got a shirt and tie that'll go with that outfit? Yeah, sure, right over this way. 
With no money and supplies getting through to the railroad boys, my business sort of petered out. So I rode on down here to meet a couple of friends of mine coming through on the Wallace wagon train. You just said that you knew that the trains weren't getting through. What makes you think that the Wallace outfit will get through? Oh, I don't know. Hunch, I guess. I thought maybe some one of those outfits might outsmart the Indians and get through. Don't you think so? Oh, maybe. Anyway, I hope so. Yeah, this will do. Give me that black hat up there, too. Well, I never expected to find anything like this up here in the woods, Corkle. You don't seem to be having any trouble getting your supplies through from the east. No, oh, well, I've been mighty lucky. You see, the Indians are friends of mine. Is that so? Well, in that case, I might settle down here. An up-and-coming town, settlers, miners, lots of gold. Well, how much do you? Fifty dollars. And I'd keep right on moving if I were you, Carson. There isn't room enough in this town for any outside gamblers. Oh, got everything sewed up for yourself, huh? That's right, and I'm letting nobody cut in. Who says so? I do. I own this town, and I decide who stays or who goes. So you're telling me to get out? Understand English, don't you? Sure. And five other languages besides. But I couldn't understand anything as stupid as that in any of them. Now I know I'm going to stay. Hey, Judge. Red's got our horses waiting down by the creek away. We can have that signal fire set to go at sun. Well, that's good. Now, Bill, you stay there and light that fire. Stoney, you and Red get back here in time for that checkup in the morning. And I'll cover for Bill. Listen, Judge. Supposing something goes wrong. I've been with Loader on his other raids. We never tackle anything as big as this. And besides, that Buck Robert is plenty smart. Now, nothing is going wrong. And if it does, what of it? There's no law in Beaver Creek except the law I'm going to make. And I'll decide who's right and wrong. Get that? That's all I need to know. Come on, Stoney. Everything's been going along pretty fair so far. Tomorrow, we're running into that Beaver Lake country. Might have a little trouble, give me a knife. But Buck, you said your partner, Jack Carson, had gone to talk to the Indians to tell them we're just passing through. Didn't want any of the land, and wasn't gonna molest the hunting ground. That's right, and as long as we haven't heard from Jack, 10 chances to one, everything's gonna be all right. Yeah, Jack never slips up. If anything had happened, he'd have got word to us somehow. Well, if there's any chance of an Indian attack, we can't gamble. We've got to have a plan prepared to outsmart him some way. But how? I got that figured out, too. Tomorrow, just at dawn, we'll throw all the horses and extra cattle we've gone up ahead. And then if we're attacked, we'll split the train. Quiet, right, Buck. Look who's cool here. You know, I've been looking for you fellows. I've been thinking, Roberts, that I've been all wrong. Why, of course you fellows should know what you're doing. The heat and the dust, I guess, that's getting on all our nerves. Well, it ain't like sitting in your own parlor, reading the Bible and knitting. Well, no hard feelings, I hope. No. Oh, no, no. Oh, forget it. Well, they say they're having a nice time over there in camp, aren't they? Yeah. All except one. Well, yeah, who's that? That's that little woman in the gambler's wagon. She had her baby tonight. Oh, that's all. Yes, that's so. Why don't you stay in your own wiki up, will you? Hey, Sandy. Come on, let's go over and see how she's getting along. Hey, he's an ornery little cuss, isn't he? I like him. Ain't they got no respect singing and playing at a time like this? Well, I guess they don't know this is going on. Well, go tell them the noisy hyenas. All right, honey. Did you ask the boys to please stop the music? The little lady in my wagon isn't doing so good. Why, sure. 
We had no idea. Thanks. Gee, that's tough. Way out here on the prairie. Miles from nowhere. Oh, I hope she'll be all right. That gambler and his woman. How oh, you women can brave hardships to settle new communities, to bring up your families decently, and allow vultures like that to ride along to corrupt your new lives is beyond me. Well, I suppose I might as well be talking to that tree over there. Well, trees are sort of like us folks. They live and let live. What she left. A husky little shaver, ain't he? You hold him. No, but my young ones are rowed up. I reckon me and the old man can take care of him. Oh, we sort of wanted a boy in the family anyway. So if we. The fact is, we wouldn't care if it was a girl. You mean you two would like to keep him? Oh, we have the right, ain't we? We've been married ten years. Who said anything about that? I don't know of anybody in this outfit who'd make them a better paw and maw. Here, I've got something I think you ought to have. I, I found it on her. You can look it over. Your hands ain't so busy. And I'll go over and see some of the men and see about burying her. I'll take care of that, Mrs. Hawkins. You'd better get some rest. Oh, it's all over, eh? <laughs> Don't tell me she wasn't running away from disgrace or she'd have named the husband she was supposed to be going to. Well, I'll tell you, you troublemaking old battle axe. She had a wedding ring. That's proof enough for me. She's dead now. And if I ever catch you spouting off that ornery mouth of yours about her again, I'll snatch that rat out of your pompadour and drag you clear to Beaver Lake by the roots of your hair. Down Judge Corkle wouldn't even say a prayer for that little woman. Well, I, I don't much about praying, but I could sing something. That'd be a good idea, Mrs. Rand.
Johnny. I, I didn't think you knew any songs like that. Well, I was a kid once, wasn't I? Well, come on, let's get out of here before I start bawling. Imagine that Rand hussy singing a hymn. Well, let's get aboard. He's a cute little tadpole, ain't he, Jack? Yeah. Honey, I noticed you looked a little pale this morning. What happened to the war paint? Well, I... I kind of thought the two didn't go together. Say, uh, what was that paper Sarah Harkins gave you last night? Oh, golly, I forgot all about it. Oh, maybe we won't be able to keep the tadpole after all, huh? A wedding ring. A C to M T. Holy soaks, do you see what I think I see? A marriage certificate. Uh huh. Read it. Read it. Hmm? This is to certify that Anthony Corkle and Martha Turner were married by Anthony Corkle. Hey, didn't I hear the judge call somebody at Beaver Lake Tony? His nephew. The son of Jim Corkle uh, of Beaver Lake. I'll bet they don't know anything about this. So that's why she wouldn't talk. <laughs> Wait till I lay into that old battle axe who said she wasn't decent. <laughs> You're gonna keep your mouth. Are you crazy? Like a fox. This and the Tapol are gonna buy us our berth at Beaver Lake. Set a horse like that. Look, man. Howdy. Howdy. I'm looking for a couple of fellers. One of them calls himself Buck Roberts and the other in, uh, Sandy something or another. Well, I'm Roberts and this is Sandy. What's your business? Hey, Stoney. Who is that? Well, you got me. I'm Alex Kirby. Jack Carson sent me. Jack Carson? Huh? Yeah. He all right? That's Mr. Wallace. He's in charge of the railroad supplies. Say, what about Jack? Well, he sent me to tell you that the engines hadn't broken their promises to you. I was there myself when they told him that it was white men from the Beaver Lake territory that was raiding and robbing and killing the settlers. White men? Yeah. I don't get you. Did Jack find out who they were? No. But he's on his way to Beaver Lake now. Said he'd meet you there. Hey. Look yonder. Indian smoke. No, that don't look like engine smoke to me. But if it is... Wallace, we'll do like we said. We'll split the train. Kirby, you take those settlers and head east with them where you'll be safe. Because if that is Indians, they're after our railroad supplies. Let's get them rolling. Come on. Come on, Paul. I can use one of the ponies out back.
Well, Loader, we made a pretty neat job of it. Nobody left alive to tell the tale. Yeah, but we muffed it. Them railroad supply wagons ain't in this bunch. We picked the wrong ones. Well, some of our boys went out after them. Maybe they got them. But not enough. And by now, them supplies are too close to Beaver Lake to start after them. Come on, let's get out of here. You know how they fall. Buck Roberts. 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 I want to see Buck Roberts. Here I am, Kirby. Buck, it was a massacre. Every man and woman killed. It was white men that done it. Well, this is tough. Buck, we gotta thank you for getting the railroad supplies through. Splitting that train wasn't such a good idea. Yeah, but we figured they wanted our railroad supplies. Yeah, but we figured wrong. went wrong on that Wallace attack. Give me after ten, boys. Two of the boys are shot up bad. We gotta get a doctor out of the cabin hideaway right away before they beat to death. Well, Jim was here a while ago. Isn't he over at the post? Did I hear you mention the Wallace train? Yeah. Yeah, Ed was just saying it was attacked by Indians. Jim Corkle's brother and his wife were in that train. Yeah, I, I thought maybe he'd like to know. Who are you? Carson's my name. What about that train? Did any of them get through? Why, I, I don't know. I, I didn't hear. I've got a couple of friends on that train myself. Cash in my chips, Fred. I'll collect when I get back. Where'd he come from? Oh, he's a gambler trying to horn in around here, and Jim Corkle don't like it. I'll tell you, you better get Doc Hines yourself, and I'll try and round up Jim. I'm just grateful that we had Buck Roberts and Sandy Hopkins along, saving most of the supplies like they did. Not to mention most of the lives of the people in this group. It's tough to lose men like Matt Rand. Yes, I guess his wife is taking it pretty hard since we buried him. Oh, I know how you feel, Mrs. Rand, but boys did all they could do for Matt. Awful tough morning. Don't you think you'd better go back there and sort of rest for a spell? Oh, sometimes a fella don't know what to say or do. There's nothing to do. He went out like a man, didn't he, Buck? He sure did. I'm gonna carry on just the way we planned. Do things just the way he wanted them done. Oh, gee, that's swell, Mrs. Man. He was murdered, you know, Buck, don't you? By someone in our own outfit. We've got this to prove it, and that makes the corporals responsible all the way. Come to think about it, the judge's two guards weren't in camp last night. Oh, 
but we got to prove those things. And I think we can if you'll just stick with us. I'll stick. It'll be a pleasure. Where's Robertson Hopkins? Back along the wagon. Thanks. Who's coming? You two all right? Yeah. I heard about the raid. Yeah, we tried to draw the Indians far by splitting the train. Give those settlers a break, but they caught up with them. They got your friend, Alex Kirby. Gee, that's too bad. Say, where did you get that outfit? I thought you were supposed to be a scout. I was, but I'm a gambler. Get it, Buck? Yeah, I get it. Climb up here before the whole train knows you're in on this, will you? Now, listen. You're this lady's friend. You come out here to meet her and her husband. Mrs. Rand, this is Jack Carson. You can tell him what we were talking about and what we plan to do. Who is he, Uncle Joe? Must be a friend of the Rands. Just rode out to meet them. You got on your mind, compadre. Jack Rand, we're going to tell a different story. I want the corporal to hear it as we go by the wagon, you understand? Right with you. So we came out to meet them. Mighty lucky for Mrs. Rand she had a friend to see her through. I thought when he's coming up the line, he's going to warn us about some more engines. No, she has a friend. <laughs> he's just another gambler, if ever I saw one. Eh, birds of a feather flock together. Not mountain trail pretty soon. We'll be at that lake before you know it. How long are we going to stay there, Buck? Oh, a few days. Long enough to get the horses rested up and the wounded patched a little bit. And yeah, maybe wrap a skunk or two. Maybe. Well, Carson, Robert's wanted me to tell you everything, so I may as well begin with the corpse. We've had trouble with them ever since we left Kansas. How about Stevens and his gang? Uh, they've gone back up their hideout in the hills. There's only half of them left. I tell you, somebody must have tipped Wallace off. They couldn't have pulled a surprise stunt like that with a paired. The Buck Roberts steering that train. We should have expected something like that. Yeah, I guess so. And wait till I meet up with him. Wallace, the train is pulling into town right now. How are my folks all right? Yeah, but they lost one wagon. Well, I'll see him in town and find out what happened. In the meantime, you better start figuring out a way of keeping those railroad supplies from leaving Beaver Lake. Now you muffed that raid loader, and uh, we don't pay off on failures. Who does he think he is talking to me like that? Take it easy, Chuck. If you want to get sore, take it out on Buck Roberts. He's the one we want to get rid of. Sure. Yeah, I guess you're right. Ed, you take a ride up in the hills and tell Stevens to get set for further orders. I'll take care of Buck Roberts personally, and we'll see if it applies. Okay. Sandy, you and Wallace cut out those railroad wagons from the train. I want them camped alone. Take them down the brush by the creek. Practically done, Buck. Wait a minute, Hoppers. What for, Buck? Ain't that taking unnecessary chances? You've got to take chances when you're dealing with killers. Sandy, I'll see you later. All right. That don't make sense to me. Well, I guess you don't want to risk the lives of the rest of the people in the train. In case the trouble starts up here over them supplies. I'll cut them out down up to the line. All right, Mac. Bring them along. 
So this is where we're going to hang our hats, huh? This is it. Beaver Lake Palace. What a dump. <laughs> well, it'll be a palace after I move in. It says uh, Fred Cook for Plaza. How come? Respectable. <laughs> That's a laugh. Well, Ma, feels like home, don't it? Sure does, Mel. How do you like it, Miss Mary? Just beautiful. <laughs> Beaver Lake. What a romantic place for a town. Isn't it beautiful, Mother? Yeah, they've done a lot of building up since your Pa and me came through here first, about 10 years ago. Hey, do you know where the cordial wagons are? I'm down the line there. Thanks, Matt. Ms. Harkins, you follow the Hobbs wagon, the rest up on through. They're figuring on camping just outside of town. Sure. How about a special escort, ladies? Oh, we'd love it. Good day, Mary Jenny. Good day. Folks pulled out of the wagon train. Calculating on landing here very long, Mrs. Rand. Yep. Judging by the looks of things, the palace needs a queen. I've decided to be it. I'm taking Sadie around to meet my friend, Jim Corco. Guess we'll be seeing you around, Roberts? Sure. Oh, Roberts, um, do me a favor, will you? Uh, will you drop the tadpole over to Mrs. Arkins for a spell? I don't want him to be around when I'm talking business. <laughs> he might grow up with the wrong ideas about me, you know? Oh, yes, ma'am. I mean no, ma'am. Well, come on, Jack. Good luck, Robert. Hey! I always said you need a few furry petticoats around here, Fred. Well, I ain't taking any chances on the corporal's grabbing them. Wish that kind of laugh in a mongrel pup. Tadpole, huh? <laughs> well, from here out, little shaver, we're gonna call you Tad. Say, that's not bad, is it? Bet you knew more like that. Where's your aunt and uncle? They come in on that Wallace train? Well, yeah, sure, Dad, but I couldn't find you anywhere. Aunt Elmira looks so tired, I sent them on down to the house to get settled. All right, that's fine. I want to go down and find out what happened on that raid. Corkle! What are you doing here? Come in and find out. And your son, too. This is for Corkle and Company. Tony, get back to that counter. I'll listen to what you got to say. No. Get in there, both of you. This is Mrs. Rand, the wife of my partner, Jack Rand. Sadie, Jim Corkle and his son, Tony. Hi, Corkle. Tony? Well? Mrs. Rand has a wagon load of gambling devices outside. She and her husband intended setting up business in these parts. But he was killed this morning in that Indian raid on the Wallace wagon train. Hmm, is that so? Yeah. So you're setting her up in business. And in the palace, with me doing some of the dealing. What do you think I am? You're a rat, Corkle. And so's your son, and he's a yellow rat. Kind of vermin who marries a decent girl and then leaves a hole in the bag. What's she talking about? I, I, I don't know. I have a wedding ring here, Corkle. With AC to MT. And a hunk of paper signed by the Justice of the Peace in Hamlin County, Kansas. It reads, This is to certify that Anthony Corkle and Martha Turner were married by me in the presence of the below witnesses on the 16th day of the... Is that true? Why, you stupid pup. How did you get a hold of that stuff? She gave it me just before she died, in my wagon, trying to reach him. And that brother of yours and his hatchet-faced wife were yapping their heads off up and down the train that she wasn't decent. There's a baby, too. Her baby and his. So, you didn't only make a fool out of yourself over a woman, but now you got a kid to worry about. He has not. 
far as he's concerned, and you too. All his rights died out there on my way. Get out of here before I kill you. Does my brother and his wife know who she was? No. Nope. But they will. Or so will everyone else if you go within one mile of that kid. And if you don't let me move in with that dump you call the palace. All right, you get the gambling concession. Fine. Well, now that's settled, I'd uh, like to show you another little trophy I've been lugging around, Corporal. Feather and all. And we didn't scout the redskin to get it either. <laughs> well, you talk about that, Jack, will you? I'll go over and start unloading the wagon. It's set for our big opening tonight. Sit down, Corporal. And relax. Nobody on that train but Sadie knows that the man who was wearing that was one of your brother's guards who disappeared from the train that night. He killed Sadie's husband, and she got him. Well, what does that prove? Plenty, because your brother deliberately covered up for him in the morning checkup. Said he was sick and asleep in the back of the wagon. All right, what do you want? Well, Sadie and I happen to like it here, and planning on staying on for keeps. So from now on, it's half your deal with giving the orders. Half? What do you mean, you giving the orders? Yeah. Because I happen to know that Buck Roberts is planning to stunt out smart you raiders and get those supplies through. And there's nothing I'd like better than to outsmart him. You would? What's Roberts planning on? I don't know yet, but I can find out. Because I happen to have something on Sandy Hopkins, which makes him a cinch for me to handle. What do you got on him? That's my business. All you've got to do is have the judge and that leader of that phony gang of Indians of yours in the back room of the saloon at midnight. By then, I'll have all the answers. And when I say be there, I mean it. There's Buck Roberts now. Here's where he's going to get his. You can't start shooting in there. Why not? There's no law against a man protecting himself in an argument, is there? <laughs> Come on. Help the boys with the table. Didn't lose any time getting set up, did she? No. <laughs> hey, if you see Jack, tell him about the meeting tonight, will you? Yeah. Hello, Sadie. Hello, Buck. So you made a deal for the joint, all right? <laughs> yeah. Getting ready for the big open tonight. Well, you know, you want to do a right smart piece of business here, ma'am. I ain't seen so much gambling paraphernalia since the last time I was in Abilene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got enough chips here to take care of quite a crowd. <laughs> sure have. What, Mrs. Hawkins? Well, yeah, I got little Tad set all right. Tad? <laughs> That's kind of cute, isn't it? I hope you'd like it. You know, I named him that right after you gave him to me. You remember off the prairie schooner? <laughs> I was kind of figuring on calling him Buck. Oh, no, I, I think Tad would be much better, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got you and Tad a home out back. Pretty nice cabin, too. A home for me? Hey, Sadie. I'm sorry. Also got you an old Indian squaw to kind of take care of it when you're busy in here. Said she's had seven kids, so she ought to know how to put on a... <laughs> I mean, take care of Tad, all right. <laughs> oh, gee, Buck, you're swell. I, I don't know how to thank you. Well, don't. Don't do that. Say, where, Jack? I left him outside with Corporal settling the deal. <laughs> the rat's been like a weeping willow. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Jim told her she could move in, take over the gambling. I don't get this. Well, if it's any of your business, stranger, Jim Corkle and I is going to be partners. And we're opening tonight. You and Corkle? Wait, wait a minute. What? You don't need no help. Get up. Lady's waiting for an apology. 
Go on, get over there. I didn't mean nothing, ma'am. Now get out of here. Get going. Get out of here. What's all the excitement? You didn't like the idea of Sadie setting up business here. The book says North Shore tonight. I got you. Thanks, Roberts, for looking after Sadie. All right. Glad to. Well, who do you suppose that mug is? I wouldn't worry any more about him if I were you, Sadie. Carson here will see it. It doesn't bother you anymore. Well, good luck on your grand opening tonight. Thanks, Buck. Perfect. You like it? Oh, I love it. Then why don't you sing it? Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world. All by the moonlight have all passed away. Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song, when I would be with the melody. Gone are the cares. It was a pretty good stunt you pulled on Jim Crow. I mean, the way you said you could handle Sandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say, now, is the plan clear to you, fellas? Yep. Any questions? No, I got it. And it's perfect. It beats me, Sandy, how he thinks up all of these things. It sure does, don't he? <laughs> Say, listen, with a couple of surefire partners like you, fellas, how can a fella miss? Come on, let's move out of here. I think I'll go home to bed, Judge, if you'll excuse me, please. Good night, Jim. Good night, Elmer. Have a good night's sleep. Yeah, I won't be late. A fine mess you've gotten us into. Quiet. Not so loud. You know, Elmira doesn't know anything about our plans. Oh, she's no saint. If she did, she'd probably use her head better than you. Letting Carson and that woman cut in on our deal. What are you worrying about? You can always wash them out after they've helped us settle with Buck Roberts and we get those railroad supplies. Well, I suppose so. All right, let's get over the phone and get it over with. I don't like that tin horn gambler. I don't trust him. It's almost midnight, Loader. You better get inside. You know, Bob, if I keep gambling with you much longer, I'm going to be clean down the bottom of my poke. <laughs> Hello, Buck. Hello, Sadie. Gee, I thought you were going to miss the open. Wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. <laughs> Doesn't look very lively to me, though. Oh, well, you know, it's kind of new yet. Yeah, I'm going to tell these boys something that'll kind of liven this place up. Do you mind? No, go right ahead. Thanks. Now, listen, all of you ranny hands and mule skinners that made that last trip with me. I know you're all anxious to hit the trail again. And that's just why I'm talking to you now. We've been through a lot of bad territory, Indian country. But from here on, I think we're going to have easy going. I just want to tell you. So you might as well enjoy yourself and have a good time, because you're shoving out tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> See what I tell you? Well, you're right. <laughs> what are you doing? 
I got to get myself a little luck, ain't I? I'm no rabbit's foot. <laughs> I know. That vomit's really taking me. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning before I get away, Sadie. Good night. Good night. Doesn't look like your lucky day, Hopkins. Well, you ain't gonna be lucky much longer, do you? Because I'm busted. Give me a hundred dollars. Give me a hundred dollars. I've got a treat for you. Mind taking over, Sadie? I certainly not. Oh, swell. Come along, Hopkins. Well, I might as well. Ain't doing no good for myself here. Come on over, boys, and try your luck. The Queen's dealing. Give me a hundred dollars. I think I can beat this game. Come on, give me a hundred dollars. I get $20 for it. Sit down, Hopkins. Now tell him what you told me. Jack Carson, you're nothing but a low-down pole kid. I'm going to meet up with you one of these days when you're all alone. Yeah? Well, right now, I'm not alone. So go ahead and talk, or else you'll find yourself in that jail that Corporal built for the justice that he brought to town. What's he done that makes you so sure of your hand? What do you think when they call him the killer? Talk! Well, come sun up, just before the train gets underway, Buck Roberts figures to cut out two of them railroad wagons. He'd have done it tonight, only he couldn't get any fresh horses. So that's why he camped them supplies away from the other wagons. Yeah. Cautious, wasn't he? Well, it ought to make it just as easy for you boys to wipe them out without any interference as it would have been for him to sneak them out. You're all right, Carson. You use your head. Floater, do you think he can get Stevens and his gang to pull a raid that close to town? Yeah, he'll follow orders, but ain't gonna help him. Why not? What's the matter? You ain't afraid. Take it easy. Yeah, keep your shirt on. It ain't a smart idea for any of you three fellas to be missing from town when the slaughter begins. That's what I meant. But I could be missing, with Sadie to back me up. Loader, those two sidekicks of yours outside could show me up to Steven. I planned it, and I like working out my own plans. That's a fine idea, Carson. That's all right. Loader, have some of the boys take him up in the hills and tell Steven that Carson's given the orders. Sure. Come on, you. Don't try tipping off Roberts or you'll be hanging your own crepe. Tell those men outside to stick around. I'll be with them in a little while. All right, Carson. Get going. Gee, such a bad one for a partner at that. Don't be a fool. We're washing Carson and that woman out of this deal. You tell Ed and Gus we don't want Carson to come out of that raid alive, understand? Ten wins, seven loses. Jack wins. <laughs> what time you watch there, Fred? You're looking out the window. You can see it's sun up. What are you so nervous about? I ain't nervous, Loder. I'm just tired, maybe, sitting up all night watching you try to break the bank. All right. I'll fix it so you can go home early. works that the queen loses. Right, Loda. Ten wins. Five loses. Jack wins. Three loses. Queen wins. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have warned you, son up was lucky for me, Loder. <laughs> I'm through. You ain't gonna quit me now, are you, Sadie? The game's over, Loder, but the drinks are on the house. <laughs>
There they are, Stevens. As peaceful as babes in the cradle. There can't be more two or three men in the camp. All right, men, get your masks on. What about you? I don't need any. This is going to be so fast, they won't know what hit them or who did it. Guess you're right. All right, you all ready? Well, let's go. Sandy, take over. I'm after Loader. We'll look after him. All right, Wallace. They're all yours. They can put him in that new jail that Corkle built. Fine. And I'll go along and turn the key. What in blazes are you doing here? Well, my wagon's got to go through to Oregon, too, don't it? <laughs> I reckon it does. You take on that Jim Corkle, but save that old judge for me. All right, Sandy. We've got to get out of here if I'm going to save my neck. Why, you folks don't have to be in such a hurry for where you're going. You're going to have plenty of time to finish your knitting, ma'am. And as for you, Judge, you've got a lot of setting ahead of you until we get this town organized and elect an honest magistrate. Now we'll all go out this way. Ladies first, ma'am. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'll tell you. You're going to use that nice new jail you just built. Now get going. Loader, I got some news for you. What's up? Carson tricked us. He's working with Roberts. They've killed some of our men and taken a rest. We got to get out of here. Buck Roberts, huh? He ain't going to live to get them wagons out of town. Fill it up. Loder's gone for you. He's been tipped off. He'll kill you. Loder? Suppose you go back in his job in the saloon and let me worry about Loder. But, Buck, you... Listen, everything will be all right. I've been waiting for a chance like this. I'll be a good girl and run back in there. Not now, Sadie. Oh, come on, Loder. Maybe your luck will change, huh? I've got something more important to do. I'm all right. Well, I guess this calls for drinks on the house. Come on, Sadie. Sadie! Shh, Now I'm gonna miss that little shaver. Well, I suppose if he was old enough to know it, he'd be doing it in the same himself. Pull it out. Yeah. Do you think you'll be able to get to see Ted on your way back? I'd like to see somebody try to stop me. Well, he'll be here. Hey, Buck. What's this? Your note. I can't figure out why I should have it. Why not? Oh, well, partners in him, ain't we? She are. Don't you forget it either. You say, do you keep that? I don't need it. 
You know, I've made about 10 trips across the country so far, coming through here, and it's getting kind of tiresome. I don't see the same country and the same places, but sometimes you hit a spot where you'd like to uh, sort of... So long, Sadie. Hey.